Uh, hello, everyone, and this is Maxim. I'm very glad to have all of you here for our webinar on autonomous cleaning in the retail industry. Uh, our speaker today is Peter Questro. He's a global business development director in Gazium. <laughs> Peter is working in the cleaning industry for over 32 years, and the last nine years, he's introducing cleaning robots to the retail and cleaning sector on a global scale. Peter is managing expectations of trade channels, users, and end users. He's providing a realistic integration of autonomous service robots and how they can help in the time of lack of and high cost of service staff and the increased demands on cleanliness. We are very glad to have Peter with us today, and I just need to mention that this webinar is being recorded. If you would have any questions during the webinar, please leave them in the chat box, and we will reply to them at the end. This webinar is provided to you by Gazium, and with that, I pass the microphone to Peter. Thank you very much for your introduction, Maxim. Everybody very welcome. I know it uh, are a lot of different time zones, so I hope it's not in the middle of the night for some of you, but uh, then even more thank you for joining us and spending your time today with us. We have some very interesting uh, knowledge to share with you and some news about the next level in robotics. So this is what we are going to do the next, uh, let's say, 30 minutes. And then we have uh, 50 minutes, you know, questions and answers. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let, let, let's start. So to start, I will share you my screen. And uh, OK, let's start. But before we start, I have a request for those that didn't uh, do it yet. Please, you know, uh, during the college, uh, turn off your uh, microphone so uh, the sound doesn't disturb the, 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 the seminar. And if questions, please use the chat box for questions and answers. So on this questions and answers, we can do this uh, after the uh, after the presentation. OK, let's start. So what can you expect in this college of uh, 45 minutes? As promised in our statement on LinkedIn, we will give you the value of full autonomous cleaning in brick and mortar stores and on demand cleaning with lower cost of use. Plus, we will talk about cloud-based monitoring app for 24-7 supervision of your robot. OK, what are the common challenges in retail cleaning today? Because there is something going on, as we all know, of course. And the biggest topic that everybody can fill in is, of course, labor shortage. Uh, businesses are globally hit by problems of recruiting and retaining cleaning staff due to high turnover rate and absence. And there's, of course, higher hygiene standards. We all know what happened the last two years and living in a post pandemic uh, where people want to feel confident and secure about hygiene. Retailers will have to increase their visibility and commitment to cleanliness. And of course, time pressure. Retail stores have many high touch surfaces that needs to be cleaned frequently throughout the day. There are also occasionally spills requiring instant attendance. So with increased time pressure for the cleaning staff. This all uh, has effect. And of course, inconsistency of low quality or cleaning uh, could be a result of labor shortages as well or limited training. And on top of this, the lack of objective metrics to measure the manual cleaning results. Well, what are we showing you today is how we can solve all of those topics. Why should we actually use full autonomous solutions inside retail? Why do we actually think about it? Well, the answer is the following four drivers determine the value of autonomous cleaning. Higher needs for cleanliness. This is an open door, of course. Keeping stores safe, clean and healthy with a focus on your presentation to your specific client group and their expectations without negative distractions. Shopping of stores and stores are still you know, an experience and, and, and retailers want to have this experience that people are focused on their shop and not on, on, you know, on something that's not supposed to be there. Another thing is, of course, proof of clean. So need for visibility of cleaning efforts and show clients that you care and, tr and track with cleaning reports. Also, when a robot is cleaning during daytime, which is possible today, then the people see that you're really uh, taking the effort. And of course, need for cost reduction and margins. This is, of course, also going on globally. Most uh, costs uh, raised from raw materials, uh, energy, food, labor shortages, time pressure and many more things. And finally, shortages of retail and cleaning staff. So while the global population is growing very fast, the working population, so the, the group between 15 years old and uh, 65 years old, is actually declining rapidly. 
So, and this will go on the next years. It's about 1.5 to 3 to 4 percent each year, the coming 10, 15 years. This problem will be bigger and bigger. So, from a co-worker and a co-bot to a co-assistant, this is really what I love to, to, to share with you, because this is what we are actually are talking about. It's the big difference, and it's now the next level of uh, cleaning robots. Next level, full autonomous cleaning robots are very different. They're changing floor cleaning as we know it today. So how can next level full autonomous robots help to fulfill the higher demands for cleanliness? Over traditional manual machines and current semi-autonomous ro robots, because there are many robots today. Well, which needs uh, are handled by next level full autonomous robots? Let, let's first look at this. A clean store, this is what we want. Why? Keeping stores safe and clean and healthy and don't distract them, the stores from products presentations. A show visible cleaning with a clean and dry result, saving time and money, the basic needs every store has. And beside this, an effective and efficient management. Let the value consist of cost savings, solving the lack of staff. So cleaning more often and more consistently for less cost in use, short return on investment, we're talking about sometimes uh, months and sometimes just, just a year, and daily reported proof of cleaning. Okay, so how can next level full autonomous robots do this kind of a service, you can wonder. Well, clean almost like a human is what we like to say. Besides self-mapping uh, of the new next generation robots, some can petrol during the daytime, searching for stains and spills autonomously. They clean stains constantly, reducing the risk a customer can slip and get injured, of course, by this, or can con contaminate the rest of the floor by stepping in the stains and spreading them all over your store. This is not what you want. And cleaning anytime, anywhere. So compact robots with autonomous spot cleaning ability, they don't have to wait until the end of the day or after refilling the stock. You can use them during daytime. You can use them once, twice, or even three times a day. So remotely controlled time savers. They, they do not have to stop their current cleaning task cleaners. And they can search, uh, they don't have to search for a mop bucket or a cleaning machine or, or the stains where they are, where the spills are. They can just clean them without interrupting their current tasks. This is a big difference. For an example, when they are do doing service disinfection. So cleaners can send out their full autonomous robot or co-assistant, as I like to call it, to remove the stains and the spills uh, by the touch of an app. In a few seconds, the robot will go away and go search for the stains itself. So this is also a very big difference. And the co assistant is the next level cleaning robots are beyond the co-worker or cobot level as we know it today. They are more like a co-assistant, eliminating manual use of robots for spot cleaning and operated robot uh, remotely, sorry, operated remotely over a supervisor app. And this is 24 seven a day, just monitoring the robot. So how can next level full autonomous robot clean on demand? This is one of the things we promise you to tell. Well, deep learning driven and artificial intelligence enables the robots to recognize stains from debris. So our robot is able to see what is a stain, what kind of stain is it, what kind of debris is it? Is it an empty bottle of uh, you know, uh, Coca-Cola or is it a carton uh, uh, you know, cup for coffee? Or is it really a stain or urine from a dog? Everything that can go. We learned by thousands and thousands of pictures and the robot uh, how to recognize those stains. So it also can do a doormat from a hard floor. So it can recognize the type of floor. So it has uh, you know, uh, intelligence on board and have real time dynamic path planning. This means that the robot will avoid uh, uh, any collision and will adapt the situation and to its program and will find a new path, a new smart and economic path to clean the task that you gave him or it. <laughs> Especially for the revolutionary auto spot cleaning. This means the robot only will do in this mode the spot cleaning and not cleaning everything, the whole floor from wall to wall. This you can still do anytime you want, but if you do spot cleaning, it will only do spot cleaning. So auto mapping ability. This is really unique software that made it possible to scan the store you have autonomously. So uh, and make a, a map in several minutes. So without a, you know, a trained, highly trained engineer or highly trained operators, this is done by the robot itself. And it's almost you know, uh, plug and play or like we call it, directly ready to use. 
This is also a huge difference. A unique Gaussian supervisor app can be used to send out the co-assistant, so the robot, alone to the location you want to be cleaned, and in the modus you want it to clean. So you have a choice which kind of uh, operation the robot has to perform, uh, like vacuum or scrubber dryer, etc. And you can choose when it has to start and when it has to stop. You can also interrupt a task from remote. So you are totally in control of the, of the cleaning robot or your co-assistant. So a charging dock or working stations, like you see here on the, on the right, this is a full working station, by the way, using a charging dock uh, can you know, refill the fresh water and drain the wastewater and charging the batteries all at the same time. And this goes also autonomously. So you don't have to worry about this. Uh, the cleaning staff don't have to go back and forward to the robot and stand for 10, 15 minutes while the robot is you now filling up or emptying itself. This is all done autonomously. Okay, well, you look at the picture like this. This is a little bit how it will go. A self-serving docking station where you can you know, have the robot go there automatically. A flexible path planning. So if there is an object in the path or something that should not be there or is not on the map, he will go around it. He will make a new path. And the Gaussian remote app, you can crawl, uh, you can control uh, the robot at all times, everywhere from everywhere. Even from your holiday address, you can, you know, remotely give the, uh, the robot the assignment to clean your store. So this is, if you see it in the matrix, it will look a little bit like this. Okay, how can full autonomous robots have such an impact with spot cleaning? Well, Auto spot cleaning can improve the efficiency of floor cleaning up to 400% or four times as, as, as efficient because it's only focusing on the spots. Cleaning stains before someone slips and falls, so also you can avoid uh, claims and prevent them to spread these uh, stains all over your store or even on second floor or third floors. A cleaner spends on average about 15 minutes on each spill and can do his original task for 15 minutes as well. This means, added together, uh, he's losing a half an hour or she is losing half an hour for any spill and stain to clean. So spot cleaning can save on time, can save on money, can save on claims and a contaminated floor. So improving overall cleaning lists and the customer experience. So this is reasons enough to introduce you to the next level of this kind of robotics. Okay, let's go on. Can the next level cleaning robots lose their location? Well, this is also very good news. The next level robots have a new generation of slam engine, totally new designed, which fully autonomous at 20 millimeters precise. I don't know even how uh, uh, much food this is, but I'm sorry for this. Next time I'll prepare this. Without human intervention, they find and make a route without QR codes or external devices or any stickers or something or engineers, even in complex and dynamic areas as in retail. Because in retail, believe me, I'm doing this now for nine years with robotics, retails are one of the most you know, challenging uh, environments for a robot. And now uh, we adjusted the robot to especially uh, be able to clean very dynamic areas like retail. And retail is can be, of course, very, very diverse. So what's then the benefit of a 24 seven cloud connection monitoring app? Well, first of all, it's a constant supervisor of the next level robots. They show real time the status and the location at any time and send messages when something is wrong. So you are totally in control all the time without any delay. The cloud based apps enable the robots to be activated or paused unplanned remotely over a smartphone. So even if you did not plan for it, you can change your mind and have the robot cleaning or if you say, well, it's not so very good moment to clean right now because we have so many customers in our store. Perhaps they don't like it if the robot goes around. Now you can stop it from remote. Remotely easy map editing enables operators to place virtual walls and no go zones to avoid cleaning restricted areas. Imagine you have something, you have a presentation or a demo in your shop or in your store where you change something and you don't want the robot to go there specifically that day or that time. So you can simply make a black line in your map from remote on the app and then the robot will not go there. So again, you are totally in control. Why is supervising the robot remotely then so important beside of this? Well, the docking stations enable the next level robots to work 24 seven. Also when your shop is closed, 
and staff went home at night or in the early morning. So you can clean when you think it's best for you to clean, but fits best to your specific situation. The task scheduling and remote control functionalities in the mobile app enable the co-assistant, as I like to call it, to be ready and available anywhere, anytime. You're always in control of the robot. Beside this, the robot sends reports after a finished task. So you will have a full report. Uh, how much uh, did the robot clean? How much percentage of the map of your store did the robot clean? How much water did it use? How much energy was wasted? How much uh, you know, time did it, did it use? Who was operating the robot? You have all this information in one eye. You can see everything on one very simple to read report. OK, let's see how this works you know, in uh, practice. We have some uh, real footage there, no marketing movie here, but just real uh, video uh, taken from uh, situations with customers. So this is a robot in a supermarket and one of the first time they're using it, they're still uh, getting used to, to the robot, of course. And the robot here just making his way to the path. You can see the robot is very compact, so there's enough space for people to pass the robot. But also in smaller aisles like this, the robot works very nicely going to the edge. And even if there's a, you know, an obstacle like this pillar on, on the left, you can see here, it's very common in a lot of supermarkets and a lot of stores, because you need them simply to hold, to hold the construction. And then the robot will just deal with this. So the robot will encounter this pillar and make a very sharp curve around it as close as possible to the sides and go around it. As you can see here, it's sharp as a knife. So it doesn't leave any much, you know, uh, floors uncleaned. Also, when there are live people, of course, when there are customers in your store that are walking there, it's not planned. The robot doesn't know this and he will, you know, adjust his speed. He will slow down and adjust his, 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 his cleaning until he is passing this, uh, this person or this object that is moving there, no matter what it is. And when he encounters to a new object or a new person, he will do exactly the same, making way giving space so people don't have to be uh, you know worrying about the robots it's totally safe there are about 23 sensors avoiding any collision and also in situations like this this is a, really a shot that you can see that there are a lot of people standing around the robot well, most robots will now stop and will not work but this robot just looks around you can see him looking around or it looking around and then continue his task going back to his original path and, and do the cleaning while the, the guys are in the background looking for the result. And when he has done his job, the robot has to have a new, uh, new battery life, of course. So in this case, you see a charging device. This is not a full station, station. this is a charging station only for batteries. The robot will go there, turns around until it's just uh, at the right height and the right distance, and it will slowly uh, back up to the, to the charging stations and charge the batteries. As you can see here, the yellow marco is just because you cannot put stuff there. And of course, you have the freedom to change your robot how it looks. In this case, they changed it to the blue colors of the, of the shop, fitting nicely to the shop. And visitors, customers, children, they all love to see the robot uh, driving around. So they see somebody is here you know, doing cleaning and it's fun to see at the same time. Of course, it's serious business, but why not have a little bit fun? You can see the whole store here is cleaned by one robot. Also, perhaps retailers that you don't expect, like this one is a winery station. They're very, you know, don't, don't, there are not much of them, but they have some special demands, like some retailers have. So uh, it, it, they want to clean very close to the vessels, also behind it, there's very limited space to the wall and the vessels, as you can see here, very narrow spaces. And most robots have troubles, uh, you know, cleaning here. This robot uh, just finds his way, makes his route, can do very narrow spaces, and afterwards, he can do, you know, the big place where all the vessels are, as you can see here. Also, when a robot is locked in the closet and there's an automated door, the robot can communicate with this automated door, IPA, and open the door remotely by itself and goes out and starts cleaning. Or, as you can see, in this shopping mall, this big shopping mall, is on spot cleaning mode. It will only concentrate on the spots. You see the dark spots there on the floor digitalized here to show better. He will recognize the, floor, the stains or it will recognize the stains. Go driving to, towards it and clean it. 
and it will see all the obstacles moving or the virtual walls you're making to avoid accidents, of course, as you can see here in the animation. And it will save you about 80% of water because it's uh, using uh, a tank that is uh, recycling the water two times or three times if you like. And here you see when the robot finally uh, needs clean water, the robot can gets his clean water from the station, drains his wastewater and goes on. So this is just an impression. I want to show you some examples of the things we have done already in the practice. And of course, we talked to a lot of retailers. But why innovative retailers recognize the power of the next level of floor cleaning robots already? Well, the answer to this is very clear. Because automate an essential daily task, which now can be implemented easily without significant process change, are lowering the barriers to entry. We all know that big companies don't like to change you know, in their operation too, too quickly, because this is a very challenging task. Well, if you have the next level robots, there's such a low uh, you know, implementation risk there. Integration is so easy that you don't have to worry about this. And size, yes, this, this time size does matter. The smallest next level robot is a vacuum cleaner, a scrubber dryer, a dust mop, and a sweeper all in one. So actually the smallest is the most versatile one. We call this the Fantas, by the way. And it can clean on the desk and zero distance from the walls and, and designed to fit in each interior. It even won a Red Dot Design Award. The value these robots bring is so high that the return on investment most likely will be several months. Why is this so short? Because it can do several things with one hardware and one piece of software. Without, you know, in comparison with other robots, they cannot do this. So, which next level cleaning robot is the best in each situation you might wonder after seeing these movies and these videos? Well, a compact, medium sized next level robot and smaller sized next level robots can be used in areas with an average of 1000 square meters or larger with 2000 square meters or of course bigger than that, so over 2000. For much bigger areas like distribution centers or huge shopping malls or XXL stores, depending on the layout, Larger robots and unique parking house robots even are available. Or you can use a combination of different robots as a possibility in very big uh, you know, combinations of, uh, of, bu of buildings. So different versions can be installed with disc brushes, for example, you know, the flat brushes or cylindrical brushes, roller brushes that had also, of course, a way to remove uh, some of the smaller debris and to collect them. And you can use pet holders, an example for diamond pads for polishing and maintenance of natural stone or PVC floorings that you're used to in, in a lot of uh, retail shops today. Or uh, with a dust mop frame. So you can also use the robots for, for dust mopping the floor before you are cleaning. So all models offer a charging or a full station a service docking station and some of them even both. So the best way to find out is to ask a next level cleaning robot expert to visit your stores and discover what next level cleaning robots can mean for you. Because of course this can be different and I always say that each and every project is a project on its own. So you really have to have somebody looking at your store to see with you, walk with you to your store or to your buildings and give you the best advice that's possible. And this is an example from, uh, from this is a really huge uh, example, by the way, of a very huge XXL supermarket where we have you know, a, a big robot for the main aisles. You can see the green lines here, you know, the, 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 com the compact robot for the merchandise aisles. You can see the red area here. And we have the little uh, robot, the new robot for the small uh, aisles here and the, the, you know, the, where the cashiers are, where there are some displays or action products. So in this case, we use uh, three different robots to do this, and you have a whole robotic team here. And this is possible because the, 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 you know there's a lot of versatility. So we have more solutions than one, and sometimes we use two or three of them. Of course, if one robot is enough, then it's enough. It's okay for us as well, of course. So how to choose then a model that fits best to your store that you might wonder right now? Well, first of all, which key factors do you need to consider? which is important. What's the size, for example, of your store? How big is your store? I mean, of course, not uh, everything, but the floor that's still available for your customers. And what's the wide of your aisles? So they are very small or very wide. This depends on the size and the type of robot you can use. 
And what type of floor do you have? Do you have a hard floor? Do you have a carpet floor, soft floor? What, do you, what floor do you have? And what is the layout and the interior of your store? Those are the uh, four, actually it says five, sorry. <laughs> Those are the four uh, things that you need to consider when you consider to have a next level robot. And there are models for each size and each situation actually available. So if we look to this, uh, to this sheet, to this matrix, you see that the, the, the smallest one we call Fantas, for example, you know, has a maximum productivity of uh, so 7.5 feet and can do about you know, two and a half to five hours. Recommended sizes from 500 to 2000 square meters. While the Scrubber 50, you know, we have two versions, uh, Scrubber 50 with disc brush or Scrubber 50 with roller brushes uh, can, uh, can do about 1800 to 1500 square meters and uh, recommended to 2000 to 4000 square meters. And depends about three to, to, to eight hours uh, of working time. And finally, the, the huge one, a hot water resistant floors can only scrub for about uh, 3,000 square meters. Well, to be honest, uh, I think it's more two and a half thousand in reality, because this is of course in the most ideal situation, like a big sports hall. But if you have some corners and some you know, resistance on the floor, it will lower a little bit. But still it can do a lot you know, in an hour. And this robot needs a little bit more space, of course. It needs about 1.2 meters to be able to go to the aisles. And it can do this for four to six hours. So these are a lot of uh, solutions and a lot of possibilities. Uh, and that's why I can say that there's for every situation, uh, there's, a, it's a, there's a solution to find, to automate it. So why integration of next level robot is, such, is much easier than from you know, the current uh, semi uh, robots or uh, let's say the cobots that are on the market today. Well, let's compare the new Fantas with current available cleaning robots and cobots in the market today. So the current generation needs a serious training before staff can do the mapping. Uh, Fantas, for example, will be able to do the mapping by itself. So it has an automated mapping system. So everybody can do it. The current cobot still needs to do unplanned cleaning for stains and spills by manual operation. So the Fantas can be sent out by a, super, a supervisor app to go out, find the contamination by itself, by its RGB camera, and based on artificial intelligence and return to its base. So you don't have to work with your uh, robot manually. I mean, that's why you buy a robot, to do the job on, on the floor cleaning for you. The current generation robots needed a separated robot for vacuuming and a separated robot for scrubbing. Well, the Fantas is actually a four-in-one solution. So vacuuming, scrubbing and drying, dust mopping and sweeping on hard and soft first, uh, software version, one hard and software version, sorry. So with extreme low return on investment, because why is it so extreme low? Because you have actually a two-in-one or four-in-one machine. So you cannot do only the scrubbing, but also the vacuuming. And vacuuming, as we all know, is very expensive. Vacuuming takes a long time. It's a very precise job and the robot can do this uh, as well. So besides uh, seniors and uh, sensors and, and vision slam, on top of this, the Fantas uses artificial intelligence based on deep learning and is able to recognize types of floor and stains and will not get lost. So a Fantas works intuitive. Cleaners don't lead to manual work uh, you know, and, and are, you know, uh, uh, work with robots in, uh, in the space. The Fantas does the, you know, the long uh, dull task and also can do this, uh, the spot cleaning. Uh, it's completed, it's do everything by itself. And the cleaner has total control of this machine. So uh, you don't have to go and leave your, leave your task, you just ask the robot to go for you. And this is a, this is a matter of, of seconds on a smartphone or a tablet. You can give this command and the robot will go away and do it. So those are some uh, big uh, changes uh, when you look at the market today and what the next level robots can offer today. So. And what other smart robotics can be used inside retail stores? Well, we want to show you something that you perhaps did not expect today, that delivery robots that can, can be used for serving, for let's say coffee and snacks for your customers, if you want to treat them, or delivering a package from, if you have a big store, from one end to the other end of the store, or for promotional product presentations, driving around in store. Imagine you have a new brand of beer, I like the idea by the way, or you have some t-shirts you want to promote, or you have some you know, stock you want to get rid of, 
you put it on your trays and you have the robot driving around in the store and it will have attention for sure of your visitors. They will look at the robot or they can take the snack or take the t-shirt or you can put a presentation there or a message. So you can use it to your own creativity. That's up to your own, of course, entrepreneurship. You can do what you want with a robot like this. So they will increase the customer experience inside the store and leave a great impression. Delivering on demand makes people feel special and reduce the workload of your valuable staff members. So you don't have to have an extra somebody to you know, present something very specifically. So smart tray indicators, weight sensors, superb shock integration. So indeed, if you put a cup of tea on it to bring to your clients, <laughs> it will not you know, spill half of it during his uh, trip there. And dynamic environmental perception. This means you have the best uh, of the best when it goes to algorithms and to uh, robot navigation. Let me show you a little bit how this goes. This is a video uh, from uh, the use of this kind of a robot in, uh, in a canteen or in a restaurant. Here you see the robot driving around and in this case you put some tea on it, some cakes some coffee. You can have this driving around. In this case, it's a you know, small canteen, but imagine this is your store. You can also have it driving around in your store. As I mentioned before, also with products you want to present. It's the idea and it is very stable. It will you know, not uh, have any collision with objects. It's very precise. It has a round vision, so it can see from all sides and it's very accurate. You can also have a birthday uh, melody on it and a silent mode and slow mode, so there are lots of possibilities. And after 15 hours of working, the robot is tired and needs to get to this uh, you know, stocking station to get his energy back. And you can have all kinds of colors as you just saw in the movie. So this is only the one that we designed. By the way, also this robot won a Red Dot Design Award, but you can change, of course, the looks of the robot. It's up to you what fits best to your situation. So, this is actually the end of the session and we now will start with the Q&A session. So I give uh, back the word to uh, Maxin and uh, if you have your microphone off, you can now of course turn it on and uh, we can go to the questions. Maxin, you take it over. Uh, yes, yes, sir. sir. I hope, I hope you're doing well. well. Yes. Uh, uh, so, so thank, thank you, you very, very much, Peter. It was very, very informative. Now we will follow up with some questions. From my side, I have only one question to warm up a bit. Uh, can you tell us, uh, in your opinion, how long it would take for the cleaning robots to replace people uh, completely? Sorry, is it a question to me? Oh, sorry, sorry. Well, it will not uh, be this case. I never think that uh, robots will completely uh, exchange people. This is uh, not going to happen because cleaning is still a human job. It's a, a job for humans, but it's like a carpenter. You, you also uh, would not say that, you know, if we give a carpenter an electrical saw, that there are still carpenters needed. And the carpenter now can do five doors a day instead of one door a day, so it's very efficient but we don't uh, get rid of the carpenters, of course. We need carpenters. Actually, we need professionals. We need uh, people with a lot of experience that are having now a new kind of technology to be more efficient in, their, in what they're doing and how they clean. And because we really need them. So it's not that we want to replace people, it's that we want to fill the gap of the missing staff that we cannot get. And this problem, again, will, will rise the next years, will become even stronger and stronger. So I even talked to a union lately when I was in the US and first they also was a little bit, okay, what's this going to do? What's this going to do with our people? But when you look at it from a different point of view and this, you see it as a tool that will help you to be more efficient, then this fear is very quickly gone and they, they love the robots. Once they see the robots and they work with the robots, they don't see it as a threat and they really uh, adopt the robot as a, as a co-worker or a co-assistant as I like to call it. Thank you very much, Peter. It was a great answer. We also have a question on our chat box. By the way, for all the viewers, if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat box. So we have one question about the PPT itself. Can we share this PPT with our viewers? From my side, I would say that we can send it to your email, but we need to confirm with Peter whether we can disclose all the information from the PPT. Yes, of course, we can make a PDF from the PPT, so not the PPT as it is original, but we can make a PDF of it and share this, of course. This is no problem. Uh, 
uh, great. And actually, the last question we have is how quickly Fantas will be available in Canada. For that person, we will ask our regional manager in Canada to get in touch with Jeffy, and he will provide all the necessary information for this uh, visitor. Thank you. Because this will be, you know, in the, in the, in the let's say, in the, the, in the last part of this year. So we are starting to prediction in the next month. It's actually starting tomorrow. <laughs> yes, tomorrow is 1st of September. And then we will start, uh, we are now building up the mass prediction from this robot, and it will be available then uh, in a few months, uh, uh, really, you know, when it's delivered to places like Canada and overseas areas. So uh, I am really excited and waiting for it to see it work. I saw, of course, a lot of testing and a lot of uh, demos already. And it's uh, really exciting how this robot can do its job and uh, changing the way we clean, actually. It's very exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you, Peter. That was a very nice uh, presentation. Thank you for your insights today. And it was very informative. And we hope our listeners enjoyed it as well. For more information, we encourage our viewers to visit our website, gazium.com. I'm going to put it in our chat box. And also, I'm going to send another link. That link is for an inquiry form. So if you want to get in touch with us, please fill in an inquiry. And very soon, one of our specialists will get to you and will provide you all the necessary information you need. Okay. Oh, but before we finish, we have one more question, Peter. Okay, great. Are you ready? <laughs> How much money can we save developing autonomous robots based on your experience? Well, this is a very good question and also a, a hard question to answer because you have to need to know the specific case. So how big is your uh, space? How big is your store? How many people are working there right now? How much time do they spend on floor cleaning? And which type of robot do you need for your for your store? But I can tell you that from my experience, uh, especially now with the new Fantas, it really will be around several months. You have uh, re, uh, you know already uh, earned back your investment because uh, of, the, of the many things that Fantas can do. You cannot only do vacuuming, but also do scrubber drying. So you need only one time to invest in the robot, and then you this robot can do uh, both of the tasks for you, including sweeping and including dust mopping. So actually four four things. That makes it extremely uh, uh, strong and in a very low return on investment. In a worst case scenario, perhaps you need about one year, 1.2 years, 1.3 years. But this means that you have a not so big floor and you don't clean this often. So most people that buy a robot, they want to use the robot on a daily basis. So let's say roughly 250 times a year. And they want to use the robot for, let's say, at least two to three hours a day. So this is where, where the mostly people use the robots. But one of the things that people sometimes uh, forget is that the robot can do cleaning mm -hmm. twice or three times a day, actually. So it also has a silent mode, so it can also do dust mopping. So if you want to have it cleaning during daytime in your store, only dust mopping, gathering around some debris that are on the floor, little, little, little stuff, you know, then you can also use the robot for this. And nobody will hear the robot even cleaning, so it doesn't disturb anything. But it gives you, of course, a very nice and clean store, and the people can see your robot as well. So you're, they can see you're taking the effort of cleaning your store. And all of this is, of course, has a value, has a marketing value as well. So it will, uh, you know, enlarge the presentation value of your store. So there are more uh, values than only, you know, the cutting the cost and cutting the cost and or, or trying to fill the gap of labor. There's much more to it than only this. So there's more to it, perhaps. Uh, and only, only you know, the money is safe on the cleaning time. Great. Thank you, Peter. Oh, mm -hmm. but we have another question. Uh, when will the self-mapping technology be available for the SC50 and SC75? That's a very good question. I wish I knew the answer myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, then I would have told you, I would have shared you. Of course, it's a logic thing that now we are able to do this. And I can't believe you, uh, I, can, I can tell you, we, we worked on this project with a lot of engineers. Uh, Gaussian Robotics is the only company worldwide in cleaning robots that has more than 500 R&D engineers. So we really have to work very, very hard, especially on the artificial intelligence part, the deep learning part, and the new you know, SLAM engine to make it possible what we can do today. 
But of course, in the future, I think I think it's very logic. We will, you know, expand this kind of technology to our other robots. But this is not planned for this year, at least not. I can tell you this uh, right away, because it's too quick. We need some time for this. As you can imagine, we need some resources for this as well. But I think it will come uh, in, in the next uh, year or years. I don't really know the exact date, but uh, I'm sure we will change also. This is actually the good thing on any robot is that the software you can update and upgrade very easily by OTA on cloud-based. And this is not possible with traditional machines. Once you buy a traditional machine, you know, the, the, value, the value of this machine goes actually down, down and down, it gets less and less. But the robot, the hardware is very, very durable, made of mostly of stainless steel. And the software, which is, I always say, 80% of what you buy is not the hardware, it's the software. And this we are continuously will updating and upgrading. This belongs to our robots and we do this actually for free. We don't send any you know, special uh, or extra uh, license for this. You don't have to uh, close a special software license for this. As long as you use the robots, let's say the first five, six years you use the robots, we will give you the updates. So the robot will only be better and more in value. So this is actually the good news. I hope this also answers your question, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. It was a great answer. And thank you to all the viewers that joined us today. I hope you enjoyed our webinar. Also, there are more webinars are coming and we will cover the other robotic cleaning topics. So everyone, please stay tuned and thank you for your time. We hope you have a great day. Goodbye, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Bye, everyone, and hope to see you in another occasion or in Chicago in the show we have in October. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye, everyone.